Hello, Lexico Living community. This is Bethany Colson, Managing Editor of LexicoLiving.com. And I'm here today with a really special opportunity to talk to Lisa Gautier of MatterOfTrust.org. Um, Lisa and her colleagues at MatterOfTrust.org are responsible for hair booms and this amazing and natural technology that um, is so readily available to us and can ecologically uh, and environmentally sustainably clean up the oil spill. So we're talking a little bit with Lisa now as to um, the oil efforts and what has happened since April 20th when the uh, Deepwater Horizon blew up. Uh, so Lisa, maybe you can just kind of get us up to speed on what's happened thus far and um, you know how a matter of trust has worked with and maybe sometimes against uh, BP to, to kind of launch these efforts. So, uh, well, um, April 30th, we started sending out messages to all of the salons on our network, and that grew really fast, and people started to um, send in hair and fur and um, uh, feathers and, and some fleece uh, till about May 15th, and we were just um, also getting nylons. Haynes uh, donated 50,000 pairs of nylons. That really got us going. We got... Um, uh, 19 donated warehouses from the Florida Keys through um, Florida, um, Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana. And then uh, on May 15th, BP contacted us. And we were like, yay! <laughs> That's good, because we were like, okay, what are we going to do with all this boom? And, um, and basically, they, it was their critical resources materials management for boom acquisition department. Mm -hmm. Woman said, I am the boom lady. You have reached me. I was like, yay. They, they called us, actually. We were very excited. And um, on May 18th, they told us that we could put on our website that BP had contacted us and to open the floodgates. They wanted all the natural fiber. They were really worried about the, um, the canals. And uh, so we, we did, we, um, we put that out there and they were doing a report on usage. They were very happy with all the hair information that they had. They were great people. And then on May 21st, um, because we had put this on our website and because we had such a huge press following because everybody in the media goes to hair salons and they are the, uh, exactly. And you are, uh, everybody in the media is the captive audience of their hairstylist for at least 20 minutes every six. <laughs> So they were, we were getting a lot, a lot of press calls, and um, and BP's public affairs department kept getting all of these questions from reporters about hair, and they were like, hair? We're in the middle of an oil spill. Why are you talking to us about hair? So finally, on the 21st of May, they put out a press release on their homepage. The top press release for 24 hours said, BP will not use hair to clean up this oil spill. And, we, and so we called them, and we said, hey. Uh, do you know that your own, you know, boom department is, is taking all of our hair? And um, and they said, uh, well, we think that might be a fake department. I don't think that would be right. And we said, well, this is, you know, the phone number and the email and the people that we're dealing with. And I could hear the guy, he was the VP spokesperson, he leaned back in his chair and he said, they're in our building. Uh, and he, you, you, had to tell, you had to tell them about... I was, I was like, I had to introduce them to their own department before they, you know, it's like you could have done that before you put up a press release about boom, you know, like this is a good person to call. Right. So and, and until that point, I had been feeling pretty positive about the people we'd been working with at BP, you know, because they were like really kind of beyond petroleum kind of people. They were like worried and, and insightful and really visionary. And, um, but after this, it was, it kind of went downhill. We, that day until 9.30 at night, we were like talking on the phone, back and forth, back and forth, and the end result was that they um, said that they had more than enough synthetic boom. Uh, they were only going to use their own BP boom. They were very um, embarrassed about the um, misunderstanding, um, but they had to stand by their statement. They did take down the statement that um, BP boom was superior um, and that our booms didn't float because they knew that they weren't, we weren't going to use our booms for flotation originally. It was only going to be used... Um, on the shores, and actually for BP, it was mostly going to be used for um, uh, it was mostly going to be used for their decontamination areas and things like that, which were on cement. <laughs> so it really didn't need to float at all. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, but once they said that, two things happened. One was that the word had gotten out, so all the press started to say, "Whoa, maybe there's something wrong with these booms." And then the other people started to say, "We can make anything float. That shouldn't be the problem." So we started to get all these people coming in with ideas of how to make the boom float. And then at the same time, we started to had to battle the BP issue for a few days, um, actually for several days. But then, luckily, um, 
people really started to like test it. We went down to the bayou and we started to compare our boom to their superior boom and all that kind of stuff. And, and um, we didn't want to say anything negative um, about BP because there was always sort of the hope that they might come back and work with us. But then the community started to contact us, mayors, public works people, emergency management people, all kinds of people that are starting to have trouble with um, getting enough boom in their own places. And we started to think, you know what, maybe, maybe we're not going to just only be with BP here. So um, we're not saying, we're just kind of saying what happened there. There were amazing people at BP, and I want everybody to know that, that it's a huge company and that there are lots of people there, and not everybody has the same mindset. Uh, and, um, and, you know, but we didn't hear back from that other team. They obviously kind of got shut down by the public affairs department. And the, the thing is that since then, um, at first we had way too much fiber because we had opened the floodgates and they didn't take it. Um, but we also just got in a huge influx of support and volunteers and everybody saying, no, 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 we're going to make this happen. Right. And then, um, and then we also, uh, started to work with harbors and, and all kinds of municipalities. And then sadly the oil really started to come in and that's really what's happened now is in just in the last few days, is that we're working with mayors' offices and um, all, all kinds of different people, actually, even people who are commissioned by BP, um, people with the Coast Guard. Everybody's trying to help us now um, because they, they see how much boom we have already made and we want to deploy it and it's donated. Right. Uh, and, and the thing is, is at the end of the day, is that everybody knows um, down there that BP is going to help as um as long as the press is there, but the press isn't going to be there forever. That you know, some big thing will happen, and this story will go away, like Katrina went away. And uh, and so what we have to do is just remember that um, all of these donated warehouses are right on the water. They are expected, you know, to see oil where they are, and um, and the boom will all get used up. The point was to hold out for BP as long as we could, so that BP paid for the removal of the oily waste, and the municipalities didn't have to. But for now. It's actually already starting to get deployed all over the place because BP doesn't have enough boom, um, and uh, and it is all getting picked up um, by um, by BP, by Coast Guard, and by municipality hazmat teams uh, because it soaks it up so fast that it's while the people are right there. Everybody puts it down, soaks it up with oil, and you can move it away. Um, it, it doesn't need you know hours to soften up or whatever. I'm right, saying. right, and it's it's immediate gratification in the be 